Lots happening right now in our region. Perch patterns have been working really well. The bite has been good. Just keep snapping it off the box. The down imaging, the side imaging. There's a lot of different variations and different ways to rig this. Oh, yeah! Look at this guy. They are heavy. Oh, look at that. <laughs> On this week's show, we're talking about the care and keeping of the catch. This is Angling Buzz TV. I'm Troy Linder. And I'm Mike Hayner. Now, Mike, you work with the Minnesota DNR on some panfish management, and as well, you also have a fisheries degree, so you're very knowledgeable in this delicate balance we have. Yeah, definitely, Troy. You know, in this day and age, we have so many, uh, some of the best technology around for catching fish. So anglers have the best graphs, the best boats, the best fishing tackle, all at their disposal, not to mention social media with instantaneous reports of where fish are being caught. So that being said, we have to be more responsible than ever before as to how many fish we actually take out of the lake. I think the days of going out and saying we had a successful trip because we caught our limit, you know, our, should be waning. We should be more focused on not keeping as many fish for the frying pan and throwing more back, so. And now more than ever, it's important to practice selective harvest for the health of our fisheries. So let's take a closer look at the care and keeping of the catch. Angling has long been a means to gather food. Fish are highly prized because they're simply good to eat. You name it, smoked, fried, baked, blackened, broiled or grilled, fish are delicious. And recently we've seen regulations for reduced limits and protected slots. For good reason, anglers are now better than ever at finding and catching fish. And the fact is, if we were to harvest all the fish we catch, we could remove them faster than the natural reproduction and stocking programs can grow them. Selective harvest is the key to maintaining quality fisheries and enjoying some to eat. Creating tasty table fare begins in the field. Plan ahead if you're gonna harvest fish. Modern live wells can keep your catch lively all day on the water. And when it's time to hit the road, bleeding fish out and keeping them cold on ice will provide a premium fillet. It's hard to get good fillets without a sharp knife. Blades are sharp right out of the box but knives need some TLC. Stones, a steel, or even an electric sharpener can keep your blade cutting clean. And today, we also have the power of lithium ion that lightens the load of fish cleaning for numbers and bigger fish too. Do you plan to eat fish immediately or store them? Salt is magic. A quick soak in a bath of salt and cold water eliminates any fishy taste and keeps the freshness even when freezing fish. To maximize the freezer life of your catch, you must minimize the air on the meat. A vacuum packer does the job. It's perfect for wild game, wild edibles, and vacuum packaged fish are delicious a year after the catch. And then there's the cooking. Cast iron is an heirloom. The guide's choice for a traditional shore lunch fish fry and a must for blackened fish. The turkey fryer is often the crappie cooker for a spring get together. And if you've ever experimented with smoking, pickling, or canning, there's a whole new pastime to discover. Fish are fun and delicious gifts from nature. And be mindful of the resource, care for the catch, and appreciate the many ways to enjoy freshwater's bounty. You know, to maintain the great fishing we have, states and provinces are implementing special regulations. Yeah, try not even state by state, but lake by lake in some states. Like, for example, here in Minnesota, we have individual lake regulations for panfish, like some lakes you can only keep five bluegills and five crappies to maintain a higher quality of big fish in those lakes. Yeah, and that's important to know, and you can find that online. After this short break, we have our highlight destination feature, as well as the first of our Buzz Bite reports as Angling Buzz continues. Sportfish Michigan is your number one source for top charter captains and fishing guides in Michigan. Our network of professionals are full-time anglers with years of experience providing customers with the best possible fishing trip services. Fish for trout, salmon, steelhead on Lake Michigan or its famous tributary rivers, the Traverse City area's world-class smallmouth bass, walleye fishing on the Detroit River and Saginaw Bay or Northern Michigan spectacular ice fishing. We do it all. Sportfish Michigan. Get out. Get bit. Sportsmen, we're truck people, we're gear people, we're Radco people. 
top brands like Lear, Access, WeatherTech, Kurtz and more. Price match guarantee, exceptional service, professional installation, researched, tested, approved. Radco, when your truck looks good, you look good. Some lodges are just a cut above. Hawk Lake is one of those. They're the only Orvis endorsed lodge in all of Ontario. And they're the four time finalists for the best Orvis lodge in all of North America. They feature Cordon Bleu trained chefs and offer some of the best freshwater fishing in the world. You can target trophy walleye, smallmouth bass, pike and lake trout on any of their 19 private lakes. Whether you fish with traditional gear or love fly fishing, Hawk Lake has you covered. Welcome back to Angling Buzz. Right now we have our highlight destination feature. We're going over to Michigan. Now Mike, I know you know the Great Lakes very well. Yeah, Trey, I've been fishing the Great Lakes for like 25 years now, chasing salmon and probably eating them 25 different ways, you know, whether it's grilling them, frying them, smoking them, they're just an awesome fish. And they were initially put in the system there to control alewives back in the 1960s, but now they're stocked annually for us to catch and keep and eat, so. That's great. And right now, let's join Al Linder and Captain Ben Wolf of Sportfish Michigan. We've been planning this trip for two years. I'm pumped, I'm pumped, I'm pumped. Two years in the making. I'm fishing with Captain Ben Wolf with Sportfish Michigan, and we're at the mouth of the Platte River, the world-renowned Platte River, and uh, uh, we're fishing for coho salmon. This has been an exciting trip planned for me. I've never done anything like this. I've talked to Ben a number of times, and he says, hey, there's a lot of ways these people are catching fish, and naturally you got people trolling, you got fly, fly fishermen all over the place, like the guy in front of us, you got bottom fishermen, and uh, you guys kind of got on to a bite that's a little bit different. And man, it's a lot more fun. That was what was exciting to me. We're going to be doing deep water jigging. Tell us a little bit about why these fish are here as I idle by all these people. Sure. Well, we're, you know, we're, we're coming out of the mouth of the Platte River. And this is the birthplace of the entire multi-billion dollar Great Lakes salmon industry. Look at that. So look at him. Look at him. Look at him. Look at them, all I mean, over the we, place. we have salmon in the river, we have salmon out in the lake. It's just a special place to be. You know, the Michigan DNR back in the mid 1960s planted coho salmon here right on this very river. And we're out here trying to enjoy the fishery that has then been the result of that, uh, that stocking initially. Tell us a little bit about Sportfish Michigan and, and uh, uh, what it's all about. Well, Sportfish Michigan is a, a network of some of the top charter nuts. captains and guides in the state. And we really try and concentrate on just about anything that someone wants to do fishing wise, you know, we can provide it for them. Whether it's fishing in a river on fly, whether it's fishing in a river with, you know, traditional gear or trolling or jigging, bass fishing is big for us. Uh, walleye fishing is also big for us, you know, so really almost anything someone wants to do fishing wise, we have someone around the state that is, you know, uh, a qualified captain or a guide and really knows their thing um, and, and is able to have a great time with customers. This is really a gas. Beautiful. This is everything I expected this to be and then a little bit more. <laughs> it was a rush, bro. You know, that looks like a lot of fun. I do a lot of fishing up in the mountains. Fortunately, the trout are about that big. They're not giants like that. Yeah, these are magnum fish, Troy. I mean, these fish get to 30, 40 pounds out there. And within the next couple weeks out on the Great Lakes system, these fish are going to be firing up. All the charters are going to be out catching the heck out of these fish all the way through the fall. So that's awesome. That is awesome. And right now we're going to join Nick Linder with the first of our BuzzBite reports.
For our first report, let's check in with Brian Brosdahl on Leech Lake, one of the most popular early season walleye destinations in Minnesota. Leech Lake is warming up and the walleyes are starting to bite. It's been a really good several days of fishing out here and guiding. Uh, they're starting to move up on the rocks. They're chasing shiners. Now this has been an exceptionally warm spring. We had ice out here 20 days ago, but now they're in full swing. They're in the vegetation, on the rocks, eight to 14 feet. Remember, stand up fireball jigs, parrot colored, watermelon are your best colors. Try everything, pink works, shiners, fatheads. Get out there and drag some jigs. You can hop them sharp, throw slip obbers in a leech. There's no wrong way to fish. Hit all the points facing the wind and you're gonna be catching fish. All right, now changing gears a little bit, the Minnesota Muskie opener was this past weekend. So for our next report, we're gonna head up to Lake Vermilion with Billy Rosner to check in on the muskie bite. It's muskie time up here on Lake Vermilion. We're in post-spawn stuff now. The fish are in shallow yet. I mean shallow, like three, four feet. They're starting in the next week or so, they'll be migrating out of these bays, transitioning out into your open basins and some of your reefs and stuff. I like to go small this time of the year. I'll use a uh, spinning rod with 20 pound suffix. I'll use a bait caster outfit with like a 60 pound braid. That works well for me. I like going small with my baits. I'll go with the number 18 Rapala. I like your storm search baits. Uh, the baby cowgirl, the smaller blue foxes, your smaller mepses, your shad wrap, and I like the storm flat stick also. Just work those bays and stuff in those transition areas. If it's calm out, you can actually sight fish these fish. I like doing that. I also like running my hummingbird, that mega sight imaging. I can actually see a fish out there 60 feet. If I don't get him to foul, I can throw a waypoint down on my hummingbird and come back to that fish. That's super cool. I want to talk about handling the fish a little bit. Every time you're up here, you got a shot at a big 50 inch. Have a big net with you for your holding pen. You can really work that fish nice in that big net. Have a big pair of pliers with you, jaw spreader. Just be prepared. Spend a little amount of time with these fish. Handle them nice, quick for a pitcher. Get them in the water. Uh, it's a precious resource or an old fish. So have a great week and good luck out there. Yeah, no doubt about it. Downsizing your lures is an extremely popular tactic for early season muskie fishing. Now stay tuned because when we come back we have more buzz bite reports as angling buzz continues. Explore Alexandria, Minnesota. Whether it's a long weekend or a week long loaded with family fun, you'll find plenty of things to do in Alex. Unleash your inner explorer with over 300 lakes, beaches, parks, hundreds of miles of trails, dining, golf, shopping, museums, and history. Alexandria is Minnesota's hidden gem. Go to explorealex.com to find your vacation this season. You have a choice, turf or surf. It's fishing season. Welcome to the outdoors. We're baiting, casting, drifting, and limiting out. The outdoors never felt so good. Catch, release, and keepers. The outdoors never tasted so good. It's fishing season. We are outdoors. Mills Fleet Farm. Looking for the perfect fishing vacation? Leech Lake, Minnesota. There's over 112,000 acres of water to explore with fantastic walleye, bass, pike, panfish, and trophy muskies. The fishing opportunities are endless. Leech Lake has it all with over 30 resorts, lodges, campgrounds, and hotels line its pristine shores. Plan your trip 
It's Minnesota's original up north vacation destination. Welcome back to Angling Buzz. Now for our next report, we're gonna check in with Jared Houston, who's pumped up about the bite in the Duluth Superior area. Party people, fresh report from Duluth Superior. Everything is awesome, man. We're catching tons of fish. Bluegills are in the shallow waters. We're targeting in the reeds and the vegetative areas. Congregated panfish and crappies alike are fighting on Mimic tough tubes, man. You can put a little chunk of crawler on there if you want to, but this works just plain Jane, as good as it gets. We're also catching the walleyes, same tactics, a little bigger sizes with the tough tubes. Um, same uh, philosophy, you can use a worm chunk or a minnow, works great. If you're using regular jigs and you have a tough walleye bite, try the stinger hooks. Obviously that works great too. Uh, Lake Superior, and the St. Louis River are talking the town. There's good fishing going on. Uh, long lining for salmon and trout. No downriggers necessary yet. Hard sided baits is working good. And then the St. Louis River, our baby, is also using the same kind of tactics. So, a lot going on, Duluth Superior. Great fishery. Get out, get fishing, rock and roll, take care. Yeah, no doubt about it. There's never a dull moment in Jared's boat. Now for our next report, we're gonna check in with Doug Wagner in Door County, where the smallmouth bite has been hot. Hey guys, a little update on what's going on right here in Door County as far as our smallmouth season is we're kind of right in the center of it. We've got post-spawn fish, we've got pre-spawn fish, we've got fish on beds right now. So anywhere you fish in Door County right now, you can find smallmouth. It's just a matter of how you wanna catch them. And for me, my favorite way to catch them is on jerk baits. Jerk baits have been so good this year. That long pause, those fish just can't handle it, and it's it's such a fun way for me to fish. But also, the hair jigs have been incredible, as always. These seem to catch the biggest fish up here. That's what the tournament guys are catching all their really, really big ones on. But also, you can't get away from the bottom stuff. Ned rigs, tubes, and grubs have also been really good. Color has been a big factor, so make sure you're switching your colors and get up here as soon as possible, because there's a lot of really good fish to be had right here in Door County. Now for our next report, we're gonna head over to the Alexandria region of Minnesota with Joe Segura. Generally this time of year, we're still in a hot minnow bite around the area, but with these warm temps into the 80s, 90s, uh, we've pushed water temps well into 70 degrees on most of the water around here, so uh, it's kind of switched things. We've, we've missed out on a good portion of our minnow bite, and uh, leeches crawlers have been working great. Uh, it depends on the wind, uh, whether we're fishing inside weed edge or outside weed edge, but uh, that 12 to 15 foot of water seems to be uh, pretty good on the average day. If there's green weeds, you're going to find bait and then you're going to find the walleyes real close by. So uh, just about any summer technique has been working right already. Uh, and as far as the bright spot for the week, I'd say is the crappies and they have been hungry and they seem to be just about going on just about every lake around the area. Um, and whether that's a hair jig, plastic or a minnow under a bobber, uh, the bass, sunfish are right with them, so if the walleyes fall out for you, you always have uh, the crappie to go back on, and uh, they're pretty darn aggressive. Now for our last report, we're going to head over to Grand Traverse Bay, where Captain Ben Wolf has been on a hot multi-species bite. You know, we've got some fantastic options out here on Grand Traverse Bay, where we are now. It's early June. We have some really good bass fishing right now up in the shallows, but we also have in that 20 to 40 foot range, just absolute phenomenal uh, lake trout and cisco action. You know, we still have cold water. It's you know really, really, uh, you know, been a late spring. And so casting blade baits in that 20 to 40 foot range is a really great option to getting lots of action on the cisco and the lake trout. One thing that has lots of anglers all across the state excited is the salmon action that we're seeing. All the way from St. Joe, up through Grand Haven, Muskegon, and even into Ludington, as those fish are migrating north for the summer, the salmon action has been absolutely phenomenal and lots and lots of bites for anglers getting out on the big lake. For more information, or if you're looking for a captain or guide in the state of Michigan, give Sportfish Michigan a call. Yeah, they have a really cool fishery over in Ben's neck of the woods. In fact, my dad just got back from shooting a couple angling edge shows over there, and he can't stop talking about it. He had an absolute blast over there. Now make sure to stay tuned because coming up next, we have cool products and the technique of the week as angling buzz continues. If you're looking at this, how do you know it's not 
this. If you see this, how do you know it's not actually this? Trust your AquaView and you'll see the real underwater world. AquaView leads by innovation. First in high definition, first in handheld viewing, the finest underwater optics, the brightest, sharpest screens, the original underwater camera, and the fish finder that puts you on the fish. Many things have been said about rough waters, but few things have been said about a smooth ride. The revolutionary Smooth Moves Ultra is a mechanical suspension system that features a four spring design and a hydraulic shock, providing the most comfortable and durable ride on the market. Through passion, tenacity, and the right equipment, you can overcome even the roughest waters. According to Minnesota's Department of Natural Resources, in 2017, 97% of boaters surveyed by watercraft inspectors followed Minnesota's clean drain dispose laws. Let's keep it this way. Clean aquatic plants and animals from boats, trailers, and equipment. Drain all water from watercraft, including the motor, and keep drain plugs out during transport. Dispose of unused bait properly. Together, we're preventing the spread of aquatic invasive species in Minnesota. Lake Vermilion. Explore. Relax. Reconnect. Minnesota's most beautiful lake. Whoa. Get hooked on our trophy wall. That's a beauty. Bass. This is my favorite fish. Musky fish. That's a beauty there. Things to do? You'll never get bored. Rooms with a view? We got them. Lake Vermilion. Four seasons of fun. And now it's time for our cool products, brought to you by Fleet Farm. We're talking about the care and keeping of the catch today. Well, first off, you gotta catch them. So we have some lures here, some great walleye lures from Salmo. Now these are exclusive colors, only available at Fleet Farm. These are great baits, little hornets there, floating baits, really, really cool, different colors, couple different sizes available. And from Northland Tackle, a great new rig, the Butterfly Series. This is the blade rig right here. They have the butterfly blade harness and the super death rig. Different hook configurations, different blade sizes, different beads, really, really great for catching walleyes. And also from Northland Tackle, the Fireball Jig Series. These are really great for using live bait. They have the eyelets on the bottom for attaching the Northland Stinger rigs. Different sizes, different colors, fantastic. And from Bagley, the Rumble B Series. These are great for trolling. Walleye, salmon, trout, really great colors, great action. Balsa, lightweight balsa, the Rumble B Series. Couple different sizes there, check them out from Bagley. And after you caught your fish, well, you need something to fillet them from Rapala. This is really awesome. You may have seen this before. This is the Lithium Ion Cordless Fillet Knife. A lot of guides like this because you can go through a lot of fillets. It has up to 80 minutes of charge time on here. Really, really awesome. You can cut through bigger fish. You can cut through numbers of fish. Cordless, really easy to use from Rapala. Also from Rapala, here's a great combo. The Fisherman's Tool Combo. That's everything you need. 24 inch ruler for measuring your fish. Nice little scissors there and nice little pliers here. It has a line cutter on the inside there and it's kind of serrated there. Uh, also, you have a 25 pound, nice little scale, handy scale, up to, up to 25 pounds. This is great from Rappel, the Fisherman's Tool Combo. And for sharpening your knife, the Smith's Edge Pro. Very easy to use. You have one for coarse and one for fine sharpening. Really simple to pull it and slide it back again, coarse and fine. This is something to keep your knives sharp from Smith's, the Edge Pro. And during these hot summer months, a great cooler is always nice to have from Yeti. You go into Fleet Farm, you'll see a whole bunch of different Yeti coolers. This happened to be the Tundra 35. Very, very sturdy, keeps things cold. It can be fillets, can be drinks, food. This actually, this size is great for keeping your fillets nice and cold. The Tundra series from Yeti. And having a good vacuum sealer is excellent for keeping your fresh fish a long time. You want to keep the air off the fillets. This is one way you can do it. Food Saver has a couple different models. This happens to be the FM2100. You have a couple different bag options. Uh, not only for fresh fish, you can keep wild game and vegetables as well for a long, long time from Food Saver. 
All these products are available at your local Fleet Farm store, also online at fleetfarm.com. Well, we're talking about the care and keeping of the catcher. We're going to join Mike Hainer about some crappie fillet techniques. Every single cast. That's a small guy, but hey, that's all you need for a fish sandwich right there. I'm telling you, Matt and I and Dan, who's shooting this right now, can get by with a half a dozen crappies this size. That'll feed us tonight with a few potatoes. You don't need to kill 30 fish for the three of us. Six of these, perfect. Panfish are great table fare. Crappies such as these, these 10 and a half to 11 inch crappies are the perfect size for, for eating. What I'm gonna do is use a four inch bladed knife, which helps a lot for um, just moving around these smaller fish, getting around the ribs and up the backbone and stuff. So basically it's just your standard filleting method. You take the knife, put it under the fins and you cut down to the backbone all the way up to the top of the head. Then you run the knife along the top of the fin here. And then what I do is go back and have the knife tip in all the way and you're just running it along the top of the rib cage. You can feel it going along the rib cage. Peel the meat back. You stick the knife all the way through towards the tail here and run it through. And then all you're doing is taking the little fillet knife along the top of the ribs and you're peeling as you fillet down. So then I will use a six inch blade just because these fillets are a little wider and the uh, four inch doesn't go all the way across. So the six inch blade allows you to just totally sweep the meat right off the skin. The last step I like to do is along the top of where the rib cage was, there's a row of bones. They, uh, people call them pin bones. They're actually called epipleural bones. And in a fish this size, you'll probably, they won't fry out. So the easiest thing to do is feel them with your finger, take the knife on either side, you just make a thin little strip cut, you remove this little chunk of meat, and there's your finished filet. We want to thank Mike Gaynor for joining us this week, sharing his insights and some tips on filleting crappie. Yeah, you know, Troy, that's a very, very important tip because I love me some fish tacos. <laughs> so make sure to check in next week because we're going to be talking about metro fishing and just how good it can be. Yeah, I'm excited for that. I love fishing in the city. And we want to remind you, as always, to help stop the spread of aquatic invasive species. Remember, anytime you leave any body of water, clean, drain, and dry. And don't forget to check us out online at anglingbuzz.com for the latest in fishing information from our region. And you can also enter our sweepstakes to win a fun weekend up on Leech Lake, along with a Fleet Farm gift card and some tackle as well. Thank you for joining us. I'm Troy Linder. And I'm Nick Linder. We will see you next week. This week's Buzz Bite Report. Tony Roach. Brian Rosal. Lee Telkin here. Brad Durick up here on the Red River. The Muskegon River. Leech Lake. Devil's Lake. Beautiful Lake Pavilion. Black. Top water's been really, really fun. Go to the plastics. Bass like this. A lot of wallies like that. Giant bluegills. From Sturgeon Bay. Lake Sakakawea. Lake Winnie Region. Northern Wisconsin. Good luck, everybody. Have fun. We'll see you next week. <laughs>